What's up everyone? Rated J here from Cynical Gaming and today we're going to be continuing this long, long, long case that has been going on for the past few shows, or streams I should say, yeah. Hey baby! So, uh, yeah, uh, I guess we get into it. No, no, day three, yeah. Woohoo! File Trimmer. So we're actually going into the trial this time with Lana here, who is on the stand. She is the murderer who murdered one guy in two different spots at the same exact time. Both spots happen to be 30 minutes away. There was another guy that was brought on to the murder case as another murderer. But still, it was the same guy that was murdered in two different spots at two different times and my brother won't shut the fuck up. Say hi, Mike! But I'm streaming, so go away. <laughs> Let me tell him that uh, I'm doing that because he has a whole shitload of time to call back and I don't want to. So, but anyway, hopefully he respects that. I have a high, there's a high chance that he won't. But either way, <laughs> let's get on with that. Oh, there's no stopping you there, Mr. Wright. Huh? Oh, what do you mean? He called for Jake Marshall. It seems you figured everything out. Uh, I haven't figured out anything. Lana, you're the one who knows everything. Emma, you always know everything. Why don't you just tell us? Mr. Wright is trying his hardest to protect you. I, I don't recall ever asking for his protection. Bitch, just take it. Damn it. How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust me? Uh, I uh, hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, Josiah, uh, I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoot, what is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal. Making a detective runner all around while on duty. And to top it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. Sorry, detective. You better be, pal. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! 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 I didn't see you there, Chief Pr Prosecutor Sky. That's okay. So, have you brought what I asked? Oh, 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 you mean this, right? My apologies, detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? Never in a million years would I have thought it was you who asked me. Could I bother you to bring me the SO9 incident files? I'll need them by noon. Talk about crazy. The SO9 incident? But Lana, that's... I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here. You might do well to read them. I can't believe you, as the chief prosecutor, were a witness in that case. The sky was a witness? Files for the Joe Dark Killings, solved two years ago. Take it from me, you don't want anything to do with the serial murderers. Oh, wait. Now that I've brought you your stuff, you just gonna ignore me? Uh, Emma, but why? Why is your name in here? What? 
my name and I, I don't know unless no it could have be Lana the SSL 9 incident is that <laughs> that's the classification number the police filed it under two years ago the rest of the world knew what's up Mike <laughs> welcome to the stream Two years ago, the rest of the world knew it as the Joe Dark killings. The Joe Dark... No, no, Lana. That's over with. No! Emma, wait. She ran away. Uh, you know what? I just remembered. I gotta be somewhere. Sorry, pal, but I'm out of here. <laughs> Jake Marshall, Angel Star, Damien Gant, Miles Edgeworth. Not to mention Lana and Emma. Everyone involved in this case is connected to those killings two years ago. This can't be just a coincidence. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck. I'd better take a good look at this file. We really need to take a good look at that file, because if that's going to be the thing that's going to help us, then, uh, Jesus. <clears throat> hey, look, we get to save. The saving's always good. We'll, we'll, we'll save over number one. Okay. A trail letter. Now here's where it's going to get all... Flipping crazy because Jesus. February twenty fourth, twelve fourteen PM, District Court, courtroom number nine. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Emma didn't come back. Allow me to call the next witness to the stand. The officer in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime. Oh, Lord. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Me, partner? Oh, I'm just a man, same as you, who wander in the trails of civilization. Occasionally helping the elderly cross intersections when needed. Yes, we get it. Oh, I know you. You're a patrolman. As for my name, if you listen hard enough, and you can hear the howling wind call it out. To be exact, it's Jake Marshall, Your Honor. Howling wind. I, I've never heard Edgeworth described that way before. Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. You were in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime to... Is this correct? What's up, Shion? How you doing, hon? Welcome to the stream. We get to deal with more of this crazy shit. According to the papers, partner. What do you mean? A desperado's soul is uh, as boundless as the deepest sands. No paper can sum it up. Jesus. Maybe it's best we get on with this quickly. Thank you, Judge. Please share with us your testimony of the day of the crime. In plain old English. You think he's gonna listen? I doubt he's gonna listen. He's just gonna cowboy it up the whole way through. My job was to keep a weary eye on the bone orchard. They said it was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, that room's protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at a street side saloon that time it went down. I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if y'all out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. I don't think we're out of ammo, homie. I'm doing good, lol. What's going on? I kind of forgot what this case was about. Okay. To sum it up, this case is about a man who was murdered 
who is murdered at two different spots at two different at the same exact time. But each spot he was murdered at is 30 minutes away. So the same guy was killed at the same time in two different locations. And it's just gotten crazy as shit. But Phillies are the 4-4 four to four top of the 5th, one out. That's nice, Mike. Thank you for the um, baseball update. <clears throat> I can't say I particularly care for your attitude. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean the security cameras and the ID card reader. I reckon even a cowpoke like you knows about those. Shenanigans! Oh, there's a whole bunch of shenanigans in this. I mean, you could ask Libby. Like, she, uh, she's been following this whole thing, and we, uh, we both kind of are just, like, out of it because of this damn case. Yes, well, what about the fingerprint activated locks on the evidence? Two outs now, man on first. It's Mike, okay, I get it! <laughs> the fingerprint activated locks. What kind of newfangled doohickeys are those? He's not being very helpful. He's not that good with machines or with following orders. Everyone's got their weaknesses. And now, don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? This one seems like trouble. Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours! Oh, yay! Baby, help! I'm gonna need it! Data crime! Alright, I already did his stupid voice. I can do it again. Oh, let's press on this. How exactly did you keep an eye on the evidence room? I just made sure nothing moved in the security camera monitor. That room's still, that's so still. Even time dies in there. I was just the caretaker who interred the recordings. You interred them? Videos of nothing ain't that useful. When the time would come, I'd erase the tape. If nothing unusual is recorded, tapes are to be erased every six hours. Each time I'd erase a tape, it felt like I was erasing a part of my life. This guy has a flair for the dramatic, but it isn't going to do him any good. So in actuality, you don't physically enter the evidence room. You said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't myself. First thing up before I want to do is, we have all this stuff. Incident number SL9, close. Perpetrator Joe Dark, crime, serial murder, sentence death. Edward Jones, Jason Knight, Edith Kirby, Rachel Morris, Neil Marshall, Neil Marshall, Neil Marshall. Do you think that has anything to do with this Marshall? Jeb Bates. Head Prosecutor, Miles Edgeworth, Witness, Lana Sky, Emma Sky. Investigation Task Force. Executive Investigators, Damon Gant, Lana Sky. Head Investigator, Bruce Goodman. Investigators, Jake Marshall, Angel Sky. I bet you Neil Marshall is related to Jake Marshall. Anyway, let's press on this one as well. But you made your rounds on the day of the crime, right? I ain't you heard a word I said, partner. I told you, that ain't my style. Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. No desperado I know lets rules get in his way. The desperados I know join the police force. 
So, Officer Marshall, on the day of the crime, it was just between you and me. I didn't set a foot in the evidence room that day. There was a rubber glove stuck in the victim's locker. Do you know anything about that? Sorry, partner. I can't say I do. I haven't been in that crypt in weeks. How does this guy avoid being fired? Exactly! How do you not do your job for that long and still have it? How are you still on the damn payroll? Seriously, this dude should have been shit canned months ago, probably. Years. Jesus. Oh, besides the rooms protected by two security systems, anyway. Okay. You used to be a detective, so you've used the evidence room in the past, correct? Oh, cause. Back in the day, my locker was a gold mine of evidence. And yet, you didn't know about the fingerprint and locking mechanism? Sorry, partner. I ain't good with machines. I couldn't even tell you how a bike works. That's quite, uh, incredible. The sensors on the locker handles cannot be seen. It's well known that some detectives are unaware of their presence. Now that he mentions it, Detective Goodman said something like that, too. The gumshoe. At any rate, it doesn't seem that this is relevant to the crime. Can you tell us what you were doing when the crime took place? If I remember right, I was at a side, street side saloon at the time it went down. It was at a fucking bar. What? What were you doing in a place like that? I was eating spaghetti. Not even angels' steak lunches can beat that pop parlor's von gold. So what? Do you mean to tell us you abandoned your police duties to eat some noodles? Not all desperados eat tacos, partner. That's not what I meant. I hope this has at least taught you a lesson. That's strange. This is usually where Edgeworth says, Did you not want to raise this here? Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm just an innocent traveling band, so if y'all are out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. Out of ammo, Officer Marshall. That's right, partner. Or as you call it, evidence. If you plan to pin me to this crime, then you'd better draw. Otherwise, y'all just wasting my time. My steel horse is waiting to carry me back west into the sunset. Hmm, one thing seems clear. Despite being responsible for guarding the evidence room, the witness doesn't appear to have seen anything. Jacksons don't take orders from anyone. Everyone knows that. You're from fucking California, man! Apparently, your superiors don't. Okay, I have a trump card on my, on my sleeve, so I'd best keep my gold. If I use it, though, I'd better up the ante. Alright. They said it was no Despite the room, If I remember right... But that ain't my style. If I remember right, besides the rooms protected by two security systems, anyway. Before I do this, I think I know what I need to use, but I'm gonna save just in case I burn myself out. Uh, let me press on this one more time. Detective, of course, back in the day, in gold mine. Sorry, partner, I ain't good at machines. I could even tell you how the bike works. Okay, that's not the one I need. I think it's this one. I think it's this one. But you made your rounds. I ain't you heard, partner. I told you that I ain't my style. Okay. It's between you, I haven't seen the evidence for a minute. Okay. Okay, I know what to use here. This, I'm gonna have to present, uh, 
Uh, put a room on. Oh, the music didn't change. I think it was on the one after it. I had to use that. Oh, what the? F hmm. It proves that he was in that. Thank you, Boo Boo. Thank you for the baddies. It clearly uh, contradicts the. Uh, shit. Okay. Um. There has to be something I could present. There has to be something I could present. I thought it was gonna be this, but. Seen in the stabbing of the detective at the PD. Wouldn't he ever. Ah, oh, thanks, Crazy, for the lurk, man. <laughs> thanks for showing up, boss. Crazy, we're paying that lurk. Uh, there. I have to be able to use that somewhere. But. Hold on. Miles. Mike. Miles. Bruce might. Okay, no. Hopefully I do, boss. Uh, but I'm confused as shit like always playing this damn game. So now I gotta figure out this part. <laughs> it's been a slow crawl getting through this. But hopefully, uh, hopefully I have a decent stream. <laughs> hopefully yours went well too, man. Video from the security camera. Placed in the evidence room. No! God damn it. Do one in a place like that. Eating spaghetti. Not even angel steak. Do you mean to tell us you abandoned your police? There's red Tony tacos. Strange. This is usually what Edward says. Did he not want to raise this year? I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to hand for it here. Okay. Yeah, the music stopped. This is it. Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd? That is, you being called to testify like this? After all, you weren't in the security room at the time of the crime. And yet, you dragged me down here. Explain yourself, partner. It's quite simple. You left a very large trail behind at the scene. Or, to be exact, a handprint. Huh. Well, listen real good, partner. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of that crib. I pay my respects. That is, make my rounds about once a month. It's only natural my fingerprints would be in there. I only wish it were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood. Oh, it's starting to- He's even got fucking stirrups on. That is horrible. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Your blood-stained fingerprints were at the scene- uh, Were at the crime scene. The blood was wiped away, however. A lumen oil test clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall, it seems to me there ain't a person in this room with a head on his shoulders. I take it you have an explanation then, Officer Marshall? About the blood-stained fingerprints? Very well, you may begin your testimony about your fingerprints. Found at the scene of the crime. Bloodstained fingerprints. 
Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. One of them just happened to be at the same place as a blood-stained handprint. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprints was by chance. The blood stain and the fingerprints are completely unrelated. Or oh, didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? See, I had nothing to do with it. No, that's bullshit. That is straight up bullshit. Although there's no room for doubt. Life wouldn't be fun without any doubt, partner. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. This guy's hiding something. I could feel it. Now's my chance to prove it. Oh, let's freaking hope we can. Let's stay in fingerprints. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. That's because you... How did you put it... Pay your respects once a month? Yeah, that's right. That and one more thing. That locker happened to be mine. What? What do you mean? I mean what I said. That's the locker I used when I was a detective. The locker I still use. All that's in there now, though, is a heap of broken dreams. Let's see. It'd be strange if I, if my prints weren't all over that locker. Currently, his fingerprint data was never removed from the locker's programming. He must have been using the fingerprint lock all this time without ever knowing it. Found on a... Marshall's fingerprints found on a bloody handprint on Marshall's own locker. The print had been wiped. One of them just happened to be at the same place as a blood-stained handprint. That still don't sound right at all. So then, what about the bloody handprint? Wasn't mine. It's no mystery. Please explain. My locker is covered with my fingerprints. It just so happened. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. There, there's no way! Boo Boo with the subscribe! <laughs> Thank you, baby doll! God, that's, that voice sticks. Wow. But thank you, Boo Boo. <laughs> I love you, baby. Uh, the chances of that happening are a million to one. On the contrary, no one could argue this ju just the opposite. The chance of that not. Happening are a million to one. I got one thing straight, partner. You ain't gonna get no reward for me with a mere fingerprint. You wanna know why? The blood stain and the fingerprint are completely under. There's no freaking way! Boo showing the love! Unrelated. They're as different as night and day. Kind of like cereal and cereal. One's got to do with breakfast while the other's a type of murder. He's right, although seemingly alike, they're totally different. I don't see what homonyms have to do with this. Oh, didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? How do you know that? I may be a loner, but I still do my job. I keep up on the reports. There was a bloodstain at the scene thought to be left by the murderer. That's right. It was found on Detective Gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on that handprint. Hey, I think we tried that too. Hmm. So that would mean... The murderer wearing gloves happened to place their hand on top of Officer Marshall's fingerprint. That's the only logical conclusion. Are you starting to get the picture, partner? The picture? This, this seal of blood in the desert 
It's just food for the buzzards. It, it is so dramatic, dude, but so confusing all at the same time. But yeah, dude, thanks for coming to the stream, man. <laughs> it's very much appreciated, bro. <laughs> There's only one reality, and that's this. The security tape. So long as my trail ain't in there, and you can't say otherwise. Oh, I bet he erased the uh, when he was a dad. This isn't getting us anywhere, Mr. Wright. Please consider carefully where you're going to with this cross-examination. I think the maid did it. Yeah, the maid did it in Apollo with the rope, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, Your Honor. And now, then continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. Too bad it wasn't me in that video, right, the fair partner? Could it have been him in that video? I mean, there really wasn't... What do you mean by that? You want to tie me to this crime, isn't that right, partner? If so, that video is the only direct evidence you have. But that video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Places you can't see. Yeah, that's all that video was, was blind spots because of this fucking thing. And with the video camera moving back and forth, there was no way to see through it. And see uh, everything that was going on. The camera's panning back and forth. The floor isn't shown. If someone was familiar with the camera's position, they could leave the room without being caught on tape. Objection! We don't have time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Wright, if you can show us evidence in this video that indicates Officer Marshall was pleasant, please do. I don't, I really don't think there's any evidence to be shown. Oh. I mean, very well. Allow me to point out your mistake, Officer Marshall. Tread carefully, Mr. Wright, or you might wind up being the one making the mistake. Now we gotta, now we definitely gotta, like, scan this tape. Now then, let's have another look at the video. Show us the incriminating evidence of the witness, Jake Marshall. The blood. But what blood? Was there bl Oh, maybe. Ah! Look, look. At the beginning of the tape, there's nothing sticking out. There's nothing sticking out of the locker. Okay, let's unpause this and then go back. Nothing sticking out. Because that's the locker we found the damn thing on. Nothing sticking out there. Okay. Right there. Right there. No, no, that's it right there. Bringing our attention back to the security camera is a mistake I'm afraid you'll soon not forget, Officer Marshall. <laughs> the days are short in Texas, and so are the- The days are not fucking short here, dude! I live in Texas! 
They're fucking long and they're fucking hot. Stop lying. Could you sum up what you have to say in eight words or less? <laughs> Very well. You can clearly be seen in this video. Exactly eight words. Not bad, Padna. The key lies in a certain locker shown in the video. Bingo! That locker with the white cloth sticking out. That was the witnesses, I believe. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. That thing is still god-awfully creepy. Jesus. Now that, since they're rewinding it, it's not gonna be there now. Bingo! That means he opened that shit. Oh, the white cloth is gone. What's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When the crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. Then it suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, you opened your locker when the camera was turned away. Uh, I bet you he was the one pretending to be Goodman. Hold y'all horses. Sorry, partner, but you got the wrong man. Well, so what if my locker was opened? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. The murderer needed to hide something, so he opened a locker and stuck it in there. It's not my fault he happened to chose mine. There was blood on there was blood on his shoulder, but that's not what we were looking for. We were looking for proof that he was in there at the time. And by his locker being open, it showed that. Why is everyone staring at me like I'm a wanted man? This guy isn't just playing dumb. He really doesn't know. Uh, I hate to rain on your parade, but you're the only person who can open that particular locker. Oh yeah? I call y'all bluff. You say I open that locker, now prove it. Um, That, buddy. Uh, fingerprint. Sensor. Oh, we got his ass. We talked about this earlier today. The lockers can only be opened by the detectives they belong to. But what kind of crazy talk is this? Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. In, in any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There are even some people in the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. <clears throat> so, Sheriff, what do you have to say in eight words or less? Oh, God. Oh, we broke him. I only got one word for you, partner. No. Okay. No. No way. Order, order, witness, explain yourself. If this is a joke, it's the worst I've ever heard. I assure you, this is no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you were doing in the evidence room at the time of the crime. Oh, we're breaking them. Oh, please answer the question. What is he now? A bullfighter? That's all right, Officer Marshall. I believe we could figure the rest out from here. We can? Have a look at these floor plans. Oh snap, <laughs> right, dude? Yo, it's how all these cases are, man. It has some, a huge dramatic thing that goes on near the middle towards the end, and it just blows the top off as soon as we figure out what's going on. There's no place for someone to hide in the evidence room. Yet Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshall. If that's so, then where was the witness? It seems Mr. Wright has an answer. 
That's right. The only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? He was right here. He was pretending to be Goodman. Office, off, uh, office, office, that's a goddamn typo. But Officer Marshall was standing right there. Hmm. So Officer Meekins didn't notice him standing there. That's almost as credible as Meekins' rap, oh, rap theory. Y'all chambers, empty partner, better reload. What? Another gang up on me. Perhaps you should think a little more about where Officer Marshall was. Officer, what? Should have seen. Oh, Meekins was the killer. Fuck. Okay. There was a. Okay, Meekins was the killer. I forgot. <laughs> My bad. Officer Masha was standing right here. There, but that's... That's where the victim, Detective Goodman, was. Correct. Unless the man wasn't Detective Goodman. I believe the victim in the video is Officer Marshall. It was you, dressed up like Detective Goodman. But that's preposterous. Officer Meekins witnessed the detective at the crime scene. Once he saw the man's face, he'd know for sure. Maybe I point, may I point out though, that Officer Meekins did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. Oh, oh, when I entered the evidence room, I asked him to show me his card, sir. Yes, and how did Detective Goodman respond? Hey, he suddenly pulled the knife on me! Oh, I hate his voice. Oh my god. Something about the officer's story puzzled me. If the man had his ID card, why didn't he just show it? Yes, he would have needed it to enter the evidence room. So he must have been carrying it. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. Yo, that's that's what happened. Marshall Marshall pretended to be Goodman on that day to get into the evidence room. He stole Goodman's ID card to go into the uh, the evidence room. After the fight, he was probably injured, and he left, just like we're say, seeing here. But when we first seen Marshall, and we found Goodman's ID card. It was at the other murder scene in the in the uh, parking lot at the um, prosecutor's office. I bet you Marshall dropped his wallet over there because that's where they wanted to pin that crime. And he dropped the wallet with the ID card in it so it would be found there. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture is on his ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed that, his cover would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have anything to say about this, Officer Marshall? Uh, you've got quite an imagination, partner. Well, we got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? He's still denying it. Looking where I could buy this game right now. Dude, you could buy it on the PSN. Um, it's, uh, I want to say 20 bucks? 20 or 30? And you get the first three games, uh, in the series with it. This is actually just the, um, the fifth case in the first game. Y'all gonna have to do better than that to break a detective. Unless you have hard evidence proving I dressed up as the victim. Hmm. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence proving beyond a shadow of a doubt? 
An officer marshal dressed up as the victim. Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems you're the one who couldn't take the desert heat. Act, this can't be happening. It's so obvious he's the one. What can I do? Hmm. It looks like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. I'll pass on to you what someone ju told me when I was just starting out. When you've run into a wall with no place to go, return to the basics. The basics? For me, that would be what Mia used to tell me. Phoenix, try thinking outside the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise. But rather, I should look for evidence that came about because he was in the disguise. He was injured! Why do you think this lo this locker was opened in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. Yet he did, despite the chance it might be discovered later as it has been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker. According to the defense's argument, Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. The white cloth was sticking out of it. The white cloth could be the disguise. The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that he opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, just what exactly is this piece of cloth? Perhaps. Perhaps the video is the key to all this unanswered questions. I don't have any evidence, so this video is my only shot. Very well. Let's take another look at the secure. Let's save here, as I don't think I have any more shots left. So we're going to save in the third file there. Very well, let's take another look at the security tape. After committing the crime, the witness opened the locker to put away the white cloth. Please show us why the witness had to open the locker. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Uh, play. Damn it. Um... This might be the blood. This might be the reason he needed to... Uh... That? I think. For some reason, you disguised yourself as Detective Goodman and entered the evidence room, so I don't know what to end yet. Yet. <laughs> However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekins barged in on you. When asked to show your ID card, you pulled a knife on him. However, Officer Meekins panicked, and the white coat you were wearing was soiled with blood. A bloody white coat. You couldn't just walk out like that. So you hid the coat in your locker. Not bad, Padna. Now that Officer Marshall, are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I underestimated y'all. I hope y'all happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, if you were only half as persistent then as you are today, we all wouldn't have to be here now, now would we? Yeah, you did know. You definitely did know, boo, that there was something up with that blood. And it actually, it actually came to the point where we actually had to use it. Officer Marshall, tell the court what you did, all of it. Alright. It seems the time has come. Marshall's confession. Oh, something tells me he's going to screw us over even more. 
I had to do it. I, I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I, I knocked him out. And managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 515. So now it brings us down to one murder at one place. So the supposed victim was really you. But there's one thing I still don't understand. It, it, she, I am still confused, hon. Believe me. There's just... It's just, it, this game is confusing. Like, it, up until you get everything perfect, this, this game scrambles your brain. <laughs> One of the reasons I love it and hate it all at the same time. Uh, I love it more than I hate it, though. That's why I play. Yeah. Traces of a large quantity of blood were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is he's the donor. It was way too much blood for such a small donation. I... Didn't Meekins say that he stabbed the guy? Like... I had to do it that day. I couldn't just let, couldn't just stand by and let it die. All right, what the hell is he talking about? Well, when you say it, you mean, do you even have to ask, partner? S09 incident. Two years have passed since that case was closed. It was going to completely end with the transferal that day. But not if I have anything to do with it. That incident's not over. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When a case is closed, only that case's lead detective can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at it myself one more time. No matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of the investigation. Why does he cares so much about because the other person named Marshall if we look at it I know we if we look at the victims there's a Neil Marshall there so that could be like a friend uh, not a friend but family family member or something maybe his dad or brother or husband I could be one of the three why does he care so much about it that day was my last chance. That's why I... Stole the detective's ID. Yeah? Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? If I didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence chance Farrell, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. Could be his husband. I, that's what I just said! It could be his husband! Like, that was murdered two years ago. You would know a lot about that, Mike. How's your husband? <laughs> I'd be arrested for stealing evidence. So you did it to fool the security camera. And the detective's ID card? I stole that the morning of the incident. So that really was why Goodman started filling out the lost item report. <laughs> He's well hung, huh? You swing on that like a monkey. <laughs> I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor's office parking lot. See? I called that shit. The ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall. So essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. Oh, what do you mean, partner? Oh, me, Tarzan. <laughs> uh -huh. I am in the middle of streaming, you bastard. I am not calling you. <laughs> I mean, the fingerprint activated lock, of course. 
no matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't have been able to open that locker yourself. But he could because a rubber glove just happened to get stuck in the door. That means Detective Goodman must have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. Huh. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins, I knocked him out. You pulled the knife on Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off. Let's just say I was a little surprised. I only planned on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. You have him enough time of the day, Mike. He's mine. No, oh, you said I swing off it like Tarzan. Yeah. <laughs> Officer Meekins currently is the one in a million type of person. Mistaking a detective for an intruder and demanding to be shown his ID. I'll have you. I'll have to think a little more about the, his raise this year. When did Edgeworth get so much influence? Anyway, he threw himself at me, and I ended up cutting him slightly. I answer. Not when I'm doing anything, no. Damn. <laughs> I'm sorry it had to turn out that way with me knocking him out and everything by the way what happened to your knife oh you mean this one I don't know what to say mmm so you knocked officer Meekins out and and managed to escape I knew which area wouldn't be caught on camera So you did your research beforehand. Those who go into the desert unprepared don't live long, partner. Now he is playing pet detective. I'll play pet- You know what? There was a case where I had to... I, I had to press a parrot. So, I mean, you're not exactly wrong with pet detective. Yeah, we had to put a parrot up on the stand. Anyway! <clears throat> I didn't think it would make a difference, though. <laughs> the security tape is erased every six hours. If all had gone as planned, no footage would have been left. However, you bloodied your coat in your struggle with Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security room when I came out, the jig would have been up. Jim Carrey. Well, you don't answer when he's with me because it's my time. You got enough of him. You two stop fighting over me. I'm not the piece of me. Uh, oh. Anyway, I opened up my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing during that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So what you're saying is on that day, oh, there wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. I, I mean, if you have to tell Dad, he likes me more than you anyway, so he, he'll be okay with it. Uh, but the blood found at the scene certainly indicates a crime took place. Uh, what are you blind? Uh, the victim shown on the tape is me. I'm not dead yet, partner. So you stole the evidence from the locker. Actually, no, I did. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. What? Mr. Edwards, where is the evidence? It's still missing, Your Honor. Oh, no, it's not! I think we have it. Detective Goodman's locker has already empty. Someone else stole the evidence. Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Fire away, partner. It's a free country. 
And just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Stealing a detective's ID, injuring a police officer, this is no small offense. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. It can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are ever a valid solution. Like I said, this isn't your case. This one is mine. And I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Hmm. The witness has an unusual amount of zeal. That let's hear more. I want to hear more for sure. I can't just forget the SL9 incident. You know why? I had a feeling we'd wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some way to that case. It better. T I'd better take another look at the f court files. I already know why. I had to do it on that day. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I managed to escape. I know which areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There wasn't any murder. I can't just forget the SL9 case. You know why? Let me check them one more time to see what page. Neil Marshall, 2. Page 2. Is just in case they answer. Objection. Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, Bodner. I have the SL9 incident file here. The name Marshall is mentioned in here. Bottom of the seventh, Phillies winning six to four. And there's your sports update on the Phillies game, which I don't even know who the fuck they're playing against or care. <laughs> Anyway, that's good, Mike. Glad you're into it. In a list of murder victims. Neil Marshall, are you related to this man? Neil Marshall. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard that name. Two years ago. Huh. He received the same lousy prosecutor award you got. What? A prosecutor? He must be talking about the King of Prosecutors Award. Brewers. Brewers! Brewers! Ah, the Phillies against the Brewers! Phillies are winning 6 to 4! There you go for your full sports update! I, I, I know where the Brewers are from, Mike. <laughs> At least I think. I'm not sure. Now I remember Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right. He was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But what's his relation to you? He was my brother. Alright. Okay, I can understand, but he went through so many fucking shenanigans to do this shit. He was investigating the murders with Damon Gant, the then Deputy Chief of Police. The group of detectives I was part of worked under him. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. Oh shit. Joe Dark. My brother fought Dark and was killed. That was the first time Dark left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. He was arraigned and incarcerated. The case was finally closed. At least, according to public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Doug. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it? That's your reason for your insane actions? There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. 
That was the last day the SL9 case could have be could be reopened. Not satisfied with its resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery has finally been cleared up. No murder took place at the police department that day. The things that happened by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder at the prosecutor's office, this fake murder was going on at the, at the police department. Chance. It's gotta be more than just that. So if no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. Which in turn means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye. But, but wait, a verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial. Objection. Which is why we examined the incident at the police department today. But, there's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remained the mystery of the simultaneous murder at the police department. It seems to me this boy's got the draw on you, partner. All of the mysteries at the police department have been resolved, no doubt about it. Our sole murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Skye. And the testimony of one Miss Angel Starr is completely uncontestable. If you have a response, make it a single word or less. Uh, oh, that's not a good response there, Phoenix. I rest my case. Oh, shit. It seems this child has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time. Disproving the alleged murder at the police department. There's no doubt what I proved today is true. The apparent murder on the security camera's tape really was fake. But I didn't realize that would end up proving Lana guilty. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Oh god. Oh shit! <laughs> Your Honor, wait! Emma, the defense has an objection, uh, a scientific objection, right? What do you mean, right, Mr. Wright? Are you this girl's guardian? Your Honor, oh, I, uh, in a sense, please, Your Honor, all I'm asking is for a minute of your time. Yeah, I know, what the fuck, it's always what the fuck at the end of these cases, always. Always! Please hear me out. Mr. Edwards, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. Oh, thank you, Edgy. Thank you! I... I was kind of in shock. I, I mean, finding out the SO9 incident referred to the Joe Dark killings. Now that she mentions it... The names of both Sky Sisters were in the file. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing, the other handprint. You mean the traces of blood found on Detective Gumshoe's locker. But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, I might be able to find a clue. Mm. So I ran over there and looked at it again. So did you find something? 
Um, no. Uh, uh, sorry, I guess I'm not that much of a scientific investigator after all. Um, is that all? Please don't be mad. I'm just a high school student. I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are are the only clue we have. If we can't find something wrong with them... Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone could save Lano, it's you! Me oh, boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright. With regard to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Um... It appears the defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright, I'm sorry I can't be of any more use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Oh, God. Well, well, go from here. <laughs> Wait, yes. Yes, there's a pro- Oh, please tell me what the problem is. Seriously. <laughs> Backseat gaming allowed. <laughs> please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Badger, badger. Oh, maybe. Oh, you might be on to something. Y y yes, Your Honor. <sighs> if ever I've needed to concentrate, it's now. The blue thing was there. What could be wrong with the handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker? Was it? It was there. Could there be something I'm missing? Mm. I'm, I'm gonna... I'm the, this handprint left at the crime scene... Clearly shows a contradiction. The only thing that seems clear is your grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intensely at the floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, uh, this is strange. Take a good look at these four plants. Missing something? Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on there? Yes, something that, when drawn, will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. Oh, yeah. Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's got to be something I can use. The question is... Which item can prove something is missing from the floor plants? Here we go! What about that piece of plywood? The Blue Badger, mascot of the police force. Defender of truth, guardian of proof. Okay. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Please look at the floor plans of the crime scene. The Blue Badger is not here. So? So, watch what happens when we put him there. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Well... Well, what? Yes! <laughs> That's right. So long as the blue badger is dancing here, it would be impossible to place a handprint at the spot of the locker. What? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Good call on that one, boo. So that means, uh, it's just exactly what does that mean? It means it can't be done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably found on that locker. Don't look at me. I didn't put it there. 
Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. I'm a... On that afternoon, Officer Meekins was the one who brought the Blue Badger to the evidence room, right? After he put it down, it would be impossible to leave a handprint on that locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left there before the Blue Badger was brought in. Just one moment, I will not allow such far-fetched balderdash in my courtroom. It may sound far-fetched, Your Honor, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, the police department's evidence room. Blood was spilled not once, but twice. But, but, but how? One time was captured on this tape, taken by the security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand, from which a trivial amount of blood fell. But the problem is, the other time. Oh, when the hell was that? Yeah, I thought that was weird because of the video. And how much... Yeah, it was weird because of the video and how much blood was spilt there. Someone bled prior to the struggle shown on this tape. It had to have been. It had to have been. Detective Goodman when he was really murdered. That's ridiculous. I refuse to accept your absurd claim. Look at guy refreshing. Thanks again, crazy. You're freaking awesome, man. And the murder portrayed in the security tape has been proven to be fake. However, that does not explain the blood mark found on the locker. So then, assuming this murder, you purport really happened. When did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proves when it occurred. When did the first incident occur? To summarize, the defense claims that prior to Officer Meekins being cut, to Jake, cut by Jake Marshall, who was posing as Detective Goodman, another incident took place in the evidence room. That's it. You know what, guys? We're going to save because I don't want to fuck this up. Okay, here we go. That's right. The blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well. Then tell us. When did this first incident occur? As Mr. Edwards said, proof must be presented. Proof that shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that can show that. Now then, will the evidence please present, will the defense please present this evidence? What shows when the first murder took place? Ah! Oh god, do I even have anything like that? But it has to be a timestamp, right? Oh. It has to have so Oh Se If the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the killer would have had to enter it. And in order to do so, the ID card would have been required. An ID card. Oh. Oh, the ID card reader. Record. Officer Beacons brought the blue badger panel into the evidence room at, let's see here, 450. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be 440 p- uh, Oh, shit. Ah, uh, uh, Miles Edgeworth. Just what have you done? I never would have figured you had the nerve, boy. Jot the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Hmm, I hope I ain't getting it. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the laminal test that the blood was there. 
However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away. By the real murderer. I would have had just 10 minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. That would mean the crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Let's take a look at the chart again. Whoever came in at 420 had to be the one to do it. There's only one other card number remaining seven 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 seven. And talk about a lucky number. Uh, wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no record of his card being used beforehand. He must have entered along with the real murderer. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with uh, lucky number seven. Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this ASAP. Find out whose ID number is the. Yeah. Uh, that's one seven too many, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to look up the owner of that ID card. At least at present. What? Explain yourself, son. The ID number 777777 it belongs to someone with a rank of captain or higher. Someone who is a so-called executive officer. We don't have the authority to inquire into such a person's identity. But that's ridiculous. Just how... I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There is one situation in which we can be granted such a authority. If an official charge filed against an executive is ex accepted, an official charge. Y'all all alike, aren't you? With your cover-ups and your forgeries? That's how the prosecutor's office operates. I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask you a question. Yes. No, not you. To her, the defendant sitting over there. Your own little executive. L Lana? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course we've looked up her ID number. And it's not n lucky number seven. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I want to ask. All I want to know is one thing about that incident. The SL9 incident. Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really use legitimate evidence? Oh, shit. Do you need the witness to repeat this question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for that trial. At the time, we... Occasionally, we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least I did. But, Lana? I became a prosecutor in order to surpass crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant, just what are you saying? I ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. Darling that child two years ago, did you really present all of the evidence and call it? Can you look me and can you look can you look me, an investigator in that crime, in the eye and say you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't. I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why won't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. But Lana! 
even if it involved forging evidence. Oh shit. That's not cool. <laughs> See? That's what I'm talking about. No. No! Oh, shut her, order, order! <laughs> oh, it's getting so good! Lana's remark caused such a stir. <laughs> We'd have to wait until the following day. Oh, God! I know we're gonna save her here and continue on let's see what we got to do today because it's investigator day number four we usually don't do four days I'm so sorry mr. Wright I'm sorry for what my sister said. That's the crime to cover drastic measures. That is what. It, yeah, yeah, we, we all just seen it. Damn it. I didn't know. I never knew that the SO9 incident was just another name for the Joe Darkmore killings. It sounds like everyone's heard about these killings but me. Lana wanted Jerry convicted so badly, that's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all in there, in the file. Jerry Dark's last victim was prosecuted near Marshall. When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. But what did you have to do with those killings, Emma? On the night Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe, Jake tried to kill me. What? He tried to kill you? Officer Marshall's brother, uh, Neil, was only trying to save me. So that means you... Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Drake trial. I didn't see that one coming. Oh, balls. Okay, well, we gotta question her now. It happened two years ago. It was right about this time of the year, too. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. And we were planning to eat dinner together when she finished her work. Then suddenly... And suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. Joe Dark. It seems like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. I didn't know what was going on. And just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage. But before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. Then, what happened? Uh, I'll never forget it. Lightning struck and the lights went out suddenly. A bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. What I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind. I, I can still see it now. Permanent picture? Oh, let's hear what it was. What did you see in the incident of that crime occurred? Jake knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. Neil Marshall was stabbed right in front of this poor girl. I don't remember what happened after that. Uh, apparently I passed out. Oh, this poor girl. When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Oh, poor Emmer, you've been through so much. She really has. That... Holy shit. I, I couldn't bring myself to testify about that instant. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. 
I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago, you must have been 14. That's understandable. Oh, this poor girl. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies. And find the evidence to make it an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. I see. I think I'm finally starting to understand what makes Emma tick. But there's still something that bothers me about that crime. I don't remember the moment when Drake stabbed Mr. Marshall, so you weren't able to testify about that. No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana... Why she made up the crime. Made up? You mean provided bogus evidence? The prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Lana forged the evidence and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Yes, but I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was being given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumors about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean, it's all my fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true, even though he may not have known it. Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold, like she was today. She must have not been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Emma. Oh, <laughs> There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? You said you were in Lana's office at the time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor. Oh, there's no mystery there. Joe Dark had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean by the police? Of course. This happened at the police department. He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. But why did he run all the way over to your sister's office? Because the detective offices and the questioning room are right across from the elevator. Across from the elevator? Bellana was the chief prosecutor, prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly. Didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She was the best in the entire force. What? That, that's news to me. After the Joe Drake case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. Lana used to be a detective. I'd better have another talk with her. That... that is up. Jeez. But... We're gonna save here and call it quits on this stream for today, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we finish it up in the next one. This has been a very long case, and a, a very confusing one, honestly, but at least now we know that, no, we still know that one guy was murdered in two different places, so did, nothing has changed. Nothing. Jesus Christ, and we've come so far. <laughs> but, we're going to call it quits on this one, guys. And uh, I'm going to say thank you all for showing up and watching and all that nifty jazz. So, yeah, thanks. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.